The scriptures today speak to us about trust. We can sum up many of what we experience in terms of either a lack of trust or great trust. Jonah began his mission as a prophet not trusting God. We kind of jump into the middle of the book of Jonah uh, this morning. We hear that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Well, we know what happened when it came to him the first time. He ran away because he said, if God is going to send me to the Assyrians to preach repentance to the city of Nineveh, then that means God is going to convert them and have mercy on them, and then they will overtake my own country. And Jonah didn't want to see that. So Jonah had to go through an experience of purification of his heart. And it's interesting that in the gospel, sometimes it was the Pharisees that asked Jesus, you know, um, about doing God's will. And Jesus said that the one who does God's will, that it would be like a man who had two sons. And to the first one he said, you know, go and work. And he says, yes, and doesn't do it. And the other who says, no, I will not. And then later repents and then does it. And we could say that that's Jonah. That Jonah is an example of, of that other son who says no, but then eventually says yes to God. This learning to trust is very key. We see in the gospel as well, Jesus and this familiar story of Martha and Mary. Mary is listening to Jesus and waiting on his word. Martha is kind of like one of my Irish relatives. Because, and this includes myself... She's worried about the good opinion that the guest is going to have of her based on her serving and based on what she presents. I always laugh whenever I'm hosting people. I'm thinking, oh, I want to make sure that they don't think anything like negative about me. And this betrays in our hearts sometimes a lack of trust. And it can reveal what we call a performance mentality because the world and the sinful way of the world tells us that we have to do stuff in order to have and then in order to be somebody. And in North America, especially the United States, we could add that first you have to know how to do and then to have and then to be. But in the kingdom of God, Our worth and our value are not based on what we know or what we do or what we have. It's based on who we are. And since we are children of God, God then gives us all the blessings under heaven and in heaven. Therefore, we have everything we need to do God's work. And to know the deep mysteries of the kingdom of God. Satan, when he tempted Adam and Eve, he basically told them that they had to work for it themselves and get it for themselves. The message of Jesus is that the kingdom of God is at hand and we are to trust and to believe in the goodness of God. And it's a trust that we as the new Israel, are called to have so deeply. We heard this morning Psalm 130, and one of the verses we did not hear was this. It says that, More than the sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel hope in the Lord. None of us went to bed last night doubting whether the sun would rise. It was just... A matter of course. There was no what if. Sure, maybe someday, millions or billions of years from now, the sun may not rise. 
But we're not concerned about that. We look forward to the sun rising as if it's something given. And this is the kind of trust that we are called to have in God. It's not a trust that then allows us to be presumptuous about God's mercy, but it is a trust that says God is so merciful that we can count on his mercy and his goodness the same way as we go to bed and wake up the next morning expecting the sun to rise. And so we ask God to give us that grace of trust, that we can trust in God's goodness as surely and as confidently as we trust that when we go to bed, the sun will rise the next day.